Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Canon EOS R5 or EOS R6 for bird photography. How am I going to do that? We're going to talk about this button right here, this menu button. If you push that button on your R5 or R6, oh my goodness, it opens up an incredibly complicated and in-depth menu system. And if you just got your Canon R5 or R6, it's not going to take pictures of birds very good at all. We got to do some tweaking on these settings and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. After that, I'm going to show you how to work these things. So if you hit the Q button here, these are the eight different Canon autofocus functions. And you have to learn how to pull these up under different situations. I have my screen recorder here and so we can teach you about them here. And then we're going to take them out in the field and I'll show you how they work on real birds. So should be a lot of fun. Off we go. All right, guys, the first thing I should do just to make sure we're all on the same page, let me just state the obvious. So this is an R5 that I'm using here. This is set up stock out of the box. I did a factory reset on this. Um, I'm using the latest firmware 1.7.0. I assume you know that you half press this front button here. It's called the shutter button. You half press that down and that locks one of those eight autofocus systems, whichever one you have set up or kind of served up. It'll lock that on the target to take the picture you full press. Uh, there are three dials. There's a main dial in the front. There's a middle dial and a back dial. There are buttons inside the dials. In fact, let's do our first setup change right now. And this one I already did so I could get my settings right. But push the button down inside the middle dial. I'm pushing it straight in. And you guys are going to be set up if you just got out of the box to right here. And there's all these different aperture priority modes and shutter priority modes and you can play with those. I always shoot in manual so I can completely control this camera. That's the best way to set this up. Make sure you are in the camera mode. If you push this down, and my, because I have my Ninja on, I can't press that info button, but that will toggle between the movie mode versus the camera mode. So make sure you're in the camera mode. The next thing to show you are these back buttons. So these are the three infamous back buttons, and you've probably seen all sorts of videos about back button, dual back button focusing. I did one on triple back button focusing. And that's where you take that half press, you know you half press the shutter button to lock the focus system on something. We can take that away from the shutter button and assign it to one of these buttons. And a lot of people prefer that, a lot of more professional type people, I think. But most people, I'd say 95% of people don't want that. They don't shoot enough to get their thumb able to control these. So uh, I'm just shooting this video in half press, take the picture. Uh, but these are the three. This one we're going to set up. This one right here, that's the joystick. And by default, it doesn't do anything. Once we activate this, I'll be able to move that focus box. See that box right over the snowy owl there? That's the focus box. You guys can tap on your screen and move it right now, but I can't again because my Ninja has taken over and doesn't and took that functionality away. But it's nice to be able to move this with the joystick, so we're going to show you how to set that up as well. Of course, this is the viewfinder. This is just the screen. The menu button's over here, uh, so these are the ones we are going to play with. There's a little eye button here if you're looking through the viewfinder. You can use that to adjust. If you wear glasses, you don't have to wear glasses because you can adjust that. That's pretty nice. I assume you know that you have to use SD cards. This is not the one to use. This is just one laying on my desk. Um, I use a flashing picture of what I use up. Um, if you have the R5, you can use the Express cards, and they are a game changer. Uh, you won't hit the, the buffer system with this. And you always want to use CS Express cards type B. I'll flash a picture of the one I use. Uh, and that's the best way to go. All right. So now that we're all on the same page, let's get into this menu system. All right, guys. Here we go. Uh, but just so we're all on the same page. So I did a factory reset on my Canon here. This is the R5 that I'll be demonstrating today. Also, I have the latest firmware, 1.7.0. And yep. So let's go. 
first thing to do, let's go to the menu and start going through this. Now notice that it's a kind of a three-tiered menu. We have icons up on the top, and on each icon there is a sub-menu of numbers. On each number there's a sub-menu of specific things, of sentences. So a pretty complicated menu. Let's go over and start with the big camera right on number one and go right down the list. So image quality. So if you have an R5 and R6, I assume you know about this stuff, uh, but you're, you're probably shooting raw or you should be. If you don't know how to process photos in Lightroom or Photoshop or something similar, then don't shoot raw. You'll shoot pictures and you won't even be able to look at them. Um, I shoot raw all the time. I'm playing with this Canon C-RAW right here, which is half the file size with the same megapixel. So far, I don't see any difference, but I still shoot raw for the most part. That little line means that none of these are activated. So you're right here. If you just got this stock out of the box, whoops, sorry about that. And unfortunately, because I have my Ninja set up, my touch screen is out of action. So I have to do this by pushing buttons, which I don't really like to do. Uh, image quality, you guys will be set right to there, to large. Uh, that's a 45 megapixel file, so you won't be able to send that by email. Um, I go down here for this video, I'm just shooting in the smallest JPEG size, which is still pretty big, 3.8 megabytes. Uh, plenty of quality for me, so you can play around with that however you want. Dual pixel raw, we don't have to worry about, it's disabled. Cropping, I'll just say a quick word about this. This is a full frame camera, the R5 and the R6 and the R and the RP. They're full frame cameras. They have a full powered sensor. There is a crop button that you can push. And before I push this, let's let's remember what this scene looks like. So we have all the, the animals and Gumby and Pokey in the middle. Now watch what happens if I switch over to a 1.6 crop. See how big they are now? That's This is exactly like going into Lightroom and cropping your images around the outside. It does not decrease the quality of the images at all. And my wife uses this all the time because she doesn't process. She just wants JPEGs. And it's easier for to see small birds. And you can still crop this further in Lightroom if you want. But if you want a bigger picture, your SOL. Uh, so I prefer to crop in Lightroom, but there is no difference between cropping in Lightroom and cropping right here in your camera. The only difference is you can't go backwards here. This, These pixels are gone and you can't recover them. That's why I don't recommend that. I would recommend shooting full and cropping in your camera. Um, and just one more thing. This, if you set, make this setting I've seen online, this does not make your camera into an ASPC camera. That's a whole different ball of wax. I won't talk about it, but it doesn't. All that does is crop in the edges. And you can even go to a one-by-one -one crop for some social media sites like this little box around the outside. So that's the story with cropping. I don't recommend changing it. Leave it at full, especially if you're new to this. Okay, menu two, there is nothing that we need to set. Not a single thing. So let's go to menu three. White balance. I leave mine on auto white balance. Let's go into that menu. Uh, my wife, who doesn't process in post at all, she plays around with these. Like if it's a sunny day, she'll, she'll choose this one for white balance. If it's a cloudy day, she chooses this. And it gives you the Calvin number. And you can, you can, change the Calvin number if you want here and shoot like that. So play around with those, but for me, white balance is just fine. White, that's, we don't need that. Color space, I tend to go for Adobe RGB because I, I process in Lightroom after, uh, I process the picture in Lightroom afterwards. Picture style, you can play around with this as well, uh, but I like to do all my processing in Lightroom, so I choose neutral. Uh, clarity, we don't have to worry about. Lens, aberration, correction, don't worry about it. Menu 4. There is nothing we need to worry about in Menu 4. Menu 5. So multiple exposure, we don't worry about that. Nothing we need to worry about in Menu 5. Menu 6. We should talk about these two. And let me talk about this one first. For whatever reason, 
Canon still has the default setting. Even with 1.7.0, the latest firmware, it's still default to on, which is very annoying. So release shutter without card. That means if you forget to put an SD card in here and you go out shooting, it'll still click and make noises like it's taking pictures, but there's nothing to write them on. So I've went out all morning without a card in here thinking I had some great images. I came home and I forgot to put the card. All were lost. So for goodness sakes, and if you're taking notes, this is an absolute must to turn this to off. Now, if I forget to put my SD card in here, it will not take a picture. This one, shutter mode, is a little controversial, and you can check out other videos online about this. I shoot in electronic most of the time, and therefore I'm shooting at 20 shots per second. The only problem with this is if we go and take a picture, you could see it blink to take the picture, but there's no noise, so it's silent. I think that's fantastic because that shutter noise is loud and it can scare away birds. There is a little controversy on this one with regard to rolling shutter, and that bends the tips of wings sometimes. I've never had a problem with it, so I don't think it's a problem anymore, but some people don't like it. They like the mechanical mode. Let's go look at that one. So here's the mechanical mode. This is the one that takes a shot. And you know how to take a shot, right, I assume? You half press the shutter to engage one of those eight autofocus systems, full press to take the shot. That makes noise. And another setting while I'm thinking about it, if you go out birding, you don't want one shot like this. You want to let this thing loose. So let's introduce the Q menu right now. If we push this little Q button down, we see another menu has popped up. We got autofocus, one shot, and we're going to cover these in other air in an under the menu button itself. But some of these ones you're going to be messing with a lot are conveniently placed right here on this menu. So go down here to drive mode and let's put that to where we really would put that. Right here it's a single shot. If you're going out birding, put it right here. This is high speed continuous plus. So this will give you 20 frames per second on that silent mode and the electronic mode or about 13 frames per shot if you're in the mechanical mode and listen to the difference now so pretty cool but you can see how that would irritate birds maybe some of them don't care but some of them are really sensitive and they'll take off so where was that menu again pop quiz Q button right here Q button and you guys will have a Q button up here as well but my ninja has covered it up. Uh, so let me set mine back to single shot for now. There is other ones though. You don't have to shoot that fast. High speed. There's low speed. Uh, and there's a, a selfie button right there where you can, if you click the button now, it counts down for 10 seconds so you can run out in front of the camera and take a shot. Okay, so that's what that's about. I don't want that for this video though. For me, I just want to just take one shot at a time. There we go. All right, let's go back to the menu. All right, let's go to number seven. So touch shutter disabled. So you do have the ability to take a picture by just tapping on your screen like that. And it'll take a picture. My screen's disabled again because I have my screen recorder on. Uh, but I don't like that. I accidentally bump it with my thumb and it goes off. So I disable it and it's disabled by default. So you can play with that one. Image review. So you definitely want to turn this one off. There it is. Go into that. So two second duration. Let me just make it eight seconds so we can see. So if I take a picture, there's the picture I just took. And for eight seconds, it's going to block my view of the target. Unless I half press the shutter, then it'll come back. Uh, but that's incredibly annoying, right? So if you want to review your images, you can push that little arrowhead button right there. And it'll pop up the last image you shot. And then you just turn this wheel and you can go to all the images you just shot. And there, this one will blow them up. There's all kinds of options you can play it around with. Uh, but for me... I definitely want to turn that off because that is incredibly annoying. 
All right, uh, metering we don't have to worry about. None of these other ones we have to worry about. Let's go to number eight. There is a sneaky hiding setting right here under display performance. You want to turn all these power savings modes off because you don't want your camera lagging or delaying or waking up when a bird will give you two seconds to take a picture of it. This is for the viewfinder. So if a bird flies and you're panning with the bird, the bird will really be here, or the bird will really be here, but your viewfinder will say it's here. So you could miss pictures like that. So you want to turn that thing off for sure, and it's hidden. So you want to put that to smooth and leave it like that. All right, now let's go to the most important menu here, the autofocus menu. Let's scroll over to number one, and here we go, AF operation. So by stock out of the box, it's set to one shot. You don't want one shot. That means that if you, in one shot now, if I lock on that snow owl there and I go over here, as long as I'm half pressing the shutter, the owl will be in focus. I will get a picture like that. But this is a stuffed owl and that might work okay for a stuffed owl. But if I do that and it's a live owl and its head moves or it shifts a little, it will not refocus, and so you're going to be out of focus. So you don't ever want this setting. You always want servo. This is always focusing constantly. So if I lock on and I go over, oops, if I, if I lock on, so if I lock on and go over here and the owl moves, it will refocus on the owl as it moves. So that's the amazing thing about that. Okay, so if you're taking notes, always, always, always be in servo mode. Next one, AF method. So these are just the eight autofocus systems that we're going to talk about separately here in a little bit. Uh, so those, that's one way you can find them. We just learned another way. Do you remember another way to pull those up? The Q button right here, the Q button. If I push the Q button and scroll right up to the AF, there they are again. They're the same ones. And if I change one here and I go back to here, it's changed here. So if you change a setting here, it remembers the setting. For now, let's leave it on face plus tracking. I call this face and eye detect because that's really what it is. So let's leave that one right there. Subject to detect. We want to detect animals. So according to Canon, animals are, this is designed for birds, cats, and dogs. That's what this will look for. It'll do okay on other animals, but maybe not the greatest. If you have this set to people and you go out birding, you're not going to have a good outing. Maybe 50% will be in focus. It really affects the autofocus system if you forget to put it in animals and vice versa. If you want to take pictures of your family and you're, you accidentally left it in animals, you're not going to have great pictures of your family. Vehicles are for racing cars and racing motorcycles in a racing environment. They'll do, it'll do okay taking cars like rolling down the street, but not the greatest. That's what it's designed for. If you're not doing any of those things, it stays in none. Animals for us though, guys. Okay, let's go to the next one. By default, eye detection is enabled, and that is the magic of this system. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, but if you're in eye detect, how cool is that? I'm not touching it. There's both my hands. It's The Canon is, by default, is allowed to just go wild and find the best eye it can find. I'm not, I have no way to direct this. There's no focus box. I'll show you in a minute two modifications to make this a heck of a lot better than this. Because right now it's kind of useless stock out of the box. If I want to take a picture of that owl, can't get the owl. Uh, but let's get through these settings and we'll come back to that one. Continuous always disabled. That means it's always trying to focus. Even if the lens cap is on, it's trying to focus. Touch and drag is the same as this joystick. Both of these don't work. And if we go back to, let me get a focus box up here. So these are the focus box modes, I call them. See, now, now we have a focus box, and the cannon will look inside that box. But I have no way to move it. 
It's because the joystick doesn't work. Normally I could move that up and down and I could punch in and do things. It's disabled. Or I could move it by scrolling over the screen like a trackpad. So those are all disabled. So we definitely need to turn them on. And I like the joystick, so that's what we're going to turn on here in a bit. Okay, let's go to the next one, number two. These are all for manual focus modes. I'm not going to get into those, but I would say turn off that little laser beam that comes out. You don't want that shooting at the birds. It'll disturb them, and I don't think it's going to hurt them, but uh, we want that thing. We want that beam disabled. Oops. We want it to off right there. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Cases. All right, cases are super important. We're going to come back to those a little later when we kind of fine-tune the autofocus system. Stock out of the box, it's set to 1. So make a note if you're taking notes. Move this over to 4. That's better for birding. It's medium sticky. The track sensitivity is how much it sticks on the bird. Like if a, the bird flies behind a tree, will it grab the tree or will it try to wait for the bird to come out the other side? That's stickiness. So this is medium stickiness. Uh, and acceleration, deceleration means the bird is moving crazily. And that's what birds do. Unpredictable movement. So it warns the canum that whatever the subject is, just be ready. It could be making some sudden changes. So that's pretty good. The other option is to set it for auto. That works pretty good too. Auto will automatically analyze the scene and it'll choose one, two, three, or four based on what it sees. Some people say there's a little delay, which there probably is, but I've never really run into a problem with it. So either auto or number four are the way you want to go. I'll just leave mine on four for now. All right, let's go to number four. So I'm going to come back to that one. That's, uh, oh no, that one, don't worry about that. That's stock out of the box, lens, electronic, manual focus. Let's not worry about manual focus. Um, this is a mat, kind of an advanced setting. We'll come back to that one as well. It's fine where it is, though, stock out of the box. Um, we'll come back to that one, too. This one I want to talk about. So we know two ways to cycle between the autofocus systems already. How about a third way? So this AF method selection control button means that you can push this little rectangle down and hold it. And then by pushing the manual focus button, that MFN button, oops, you can cycle between the autofocus functions. I did a video where, I'll, where I could set this up to hit this AF on button, just one button to do the same thing, which is the way a lot of people shoot, at least in my circle shoot, because they don't like back button focusing, but um, I'll link down below. You can go to a video. I'll show you how to set that up. All right. What else here? So orientation linked autofocus point. Choose that one. And what that does, real quickly, that's a focus box right there. So if I'm, if I'm shooting in this horizontal mode or this landscape mode, and then I turn my camera up like that, the focus box will jump up to the top quarter of the screen, which is where you want to be. If you're shooting people down here and the person's in here, and you turn it like this, without that setting, the focus box will be at their belly button and so it's really convenient so and if you don't set that one that's fine too but that that's just the way I set it uh, number five another important one this one's super important we're going to come back to that one in a minute and there's nothing else we need to talk about here All right let's go to this one we don't I'm not going to talk about any of these uh, the wrench, I don't think there's anything in here we re really need to talk about right now. There's where you format your cards right there. But yeah, there's nothing we need in here. Power savings, we need to talk about that. I did this one before I started the video. This one is important. You might want to note card this one. 
So display off. When does this thing power off into a savings mode? I always crank mine up to 30 minutes. You can play with that. It doesn't matter really. This one you have to disable. Auto power off. That'll put your camera to sleep. And if a rare bird pops out of the bush, it'll take a second or maybe two seconds for this to come on and the bird might be gone. So you always want to disable that setting. Uh, viewfinder disable, you can play with that. It comes on and off pretty quick. I think it's three minutes default. I just disable it for this video because I don't want to mess up my screen recorder. But the key one is that auto power. Make sure that's disabled. There is really nothing we need to talk about here in number three. Number four, nothing to talk about. Number five, nothing to talk about. Number six, nothing to talk about. All right, let's scroll over to the little camera now. Really, there's not much we need to talk about here either. We're going to use this custom button setting a lot, but we'll come to that. And, yep, there's nothing we need to talk about there. Okay, so we have just taken care of that menu system. Now let's go over to the autofocus systems, the eight different autofocus systems. Let's explain that. Let's get into the weeds on those because that's going to make or break you as a bird photographer. Here we go. All right, guys, let's get into probably the most important part of this video, and that's understanding these eight different autofocus systems. So here's a pop quiz. How do you pull them up? Where do they live? In the last part of this video, I showed you three places that they live. Number one, you can go to the menu. It's going to take too much time, but you go, go to the menu. You can go back to AF, scroll over to number one, scroll down to method, and there's the eight autofocus systems right there. And you can engage. There's your face tracking, and now we're on face tracking. Where else? Two more places. Good, I heard somebody say, hit the Q button, right? There might be a Q up in here in your screen as well. So go ahead and hit that. For whatever reason, the Ninja makes the Q disappear in mine, but you'll have a Q you can tap, or you can just tap the Q on your R5 or R6 here. And then scroll over to find them, and there they are, and there they are. The same ones right there. Where else? This one is silly, but the other place, stock out of the box, is if you push this rectangle button here down and then you push the MF button, which is that little tiny button right next to the shutter, I can also cycle between them. Kind of a pain to push two buttons. So, and again, a plug for one of my other videos. I taught you how to set up this AF on button to do this but only just by pressing this one button with your thumb. So very cool. I won't set it up now though. I'm just going to leave this more stock out of the box. So let's go find them. So let's pull them up by the Q menu. Uh, let's start with the most important one. This is face eye detect. It's officially called face plus tracking. No one calls it that. Face and eye detect. But this is amazing. So and let me see how my screen is kind of cluttered. If I hit this info button you cycle between the different view screen modes. So let's turn everything off. All right, so as I said in the previous part of the video, the way this is set up stock out of the box is Canon's autofocus system just releases and it goes looks for an eye. So if you want to take a picture of that snow owl, you are S-O-L. You can't, there's no way to lock onto its eye stock out of the box, which is silly. So let me show you two modifications which can remedy this problem. So the first modification is, and we need to do this anyway, let's activate this joystick. This joystick is wonderful, but right now it does nothing. So let's go into the menu, let's go to the small camera, let's go over to number three, and let's go to customize buttons. So I talked more about this in a another video so I won't I'm just gonna find it but whatever button is glowing orange that's the one you're gonna modify so we need to go find this joystick on the little cartoon there so just grab one of these dials and start turning until you find it and it'll come up right now see how it's glowing orange that means we can activate it 
And if we look under the camera row, it's turned off. So let's fix that by clicking set and going and activate it, choosing direct autofocus point selection. Cool. You might as well do that for movie camera while you're over there as well, but I won't worry about that. Now if we go back, it still locks on something, but I have the ability to direct it a little bit by pushing either the arrow, the joystick, kind of pulling it to the right, pulling it to the left. See how it hops? So the trouble with this is, as you can see, I want to go back to the gray owl. It doesn't work that good. Another way you can do it is like I can line up, put Gumby in the middle of my screen, and I can push the button straight in. Don't turn off face, face select, though. But if I push the button straight in, it says, hey, look in the center of the screen first and then find something there. So same thing. Now if I want to get the owl, I can push into that button again. But see, I don't want to turn the face select off. I have to twice push. So that's no good, right? That's one way to fix it. Let's fix this thing permanently. Wouldn't it be nice to have a focus box that I could move around and control with this joystick? So let's go make that happen. Go back to the menu. And let's go to back to the AF menu. And let's go over to number five. And there it is right there, and that's the problem. This is the initial servo AF point for face detect, eye detect. It's set to auto. That means the cannon is in charge. You're not in charge. You're not the boss. It's going to look for an eye and it doesn't care. So let's fix this right now. So I prefer to choose this mode right here. Initial AF point set for face eye detect. That's going to give you a focus box and put you in control. The next one, we'll not worry about that one. It's very similar, though. You can't go wrong with either of those, but let's put this one, because I want the focus box to start right in the middle of the screen. And see how it's in the middle of the screen. Now, when I push this, let's get Gumby. When I push this down, the Canon autofocus motor or system is going to look inside this box first. If it can find an eye, it'll grab the eye. If it can't find an eye, it'll look for a head. It'll grab the head, or look for a face is next. Eye, then face, then head, then body. That's the way the computer's designed. If, For example, if I go over here and hit the wall, it'll look in that box. It won't find an eye, a face, a head, or a body. Then it's allowed to start looking outside the perimeter of that box and look further and further and further and see how it does jump right on the the owl there. If I go to the snowy owl and just if I'm off a little bit, it might grab the... Nope, see it's struggling. Oh, there we go. But see it did struggle a little bit. So we would have to go to a different focus system for that. Same for Pokey. If, if I line Pokey up, and by the way, I forgot to tell you, look what we can do with that focus box. Just by moving this thumb like a joystick. I can move it all over the place. If I want to go quickly to the center, all you do is push this straight in, and it jumps to the center. So let's get Pokey, Pokey's eye. It doesn't work, right? So we now have to go to one of the box focus methods. So let's look at those next. So these are the four box focuses, I call them. The cannon will look, and it will stay inside a box. Here's a tiny box. Here's a, a bigger box. Here's the same size box with assistance points. Same size box with more assistance points. These three are really the same, only this has no assistance points. This has a couple assistance points. This has a whole mess of assistance points. Let's look at this and see how this works. So if I put this on Pokey, maybe fine tune this a little with my joystick, it'll look inside this box for an eye and face and hopefully get a picture of Pokey. The only trouble is it might see the fur on the gray owl in the background. It could lock onto that. I don't think it is though. Um, let's go to the snow owl here. It's definitely locked onto that. Watch if I lock onto this pole. See how everything in the background? It does not ever search outside that box. So, and that's a focus box. We can make that smaller though. Let's go to this tiny little one here. That would be great for Pokey's eye. So I can put that right over Pokey, press, 
got the picture. This is great for birds that are in a bush and the face and eye detect is not working. It's grabbing sticks thinking it's the eye. So that one works great for that. This one does not work for birds that are flying because you would have to keep the bird in that box and it's pretty darn tough. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Let's look at another box. Now we have some assistance points here. So this is exactly the same story. It's going to look inside the big box. If it can find an eye, a face, a head, or a body, it won't use those little outside assistance points. But maybe Gumby's going to run and move just as I'm going to shoot it. And we have one assistance point saving the day there, the one at 9 o'clock. So the, the middle of the box, the focus box, will say, I don't see anything. I don't see an eye, face, head, or body. And it'll ask the assistance points, hey guys, does anybody see what looks like a head, face, or body? And the one at 9 o'clock says, I might see one, but see, it doesn't work too good here because the one at 3 o'clock says, oh, I see some really nice sharpness here. It's closer. Let's go with that. So it doesn't always work. If I went like this, then it will go back on Gumby because that one at 3 o'clock doesn't see anything. But see, that's the way that works. And the next one is exactly the same, only it's got, whoops, only it's got more helper spots around it. A lot of professional photographers, music, uh, music photographers use this one right here. If the guy jumps, I still got three assistance points on there. Uh, and I'll still get the picture even though the guitar player jumped out of the way uh, of just as I was taking the picture. So that's how they work. We got one more to go through here. So these three, these are the zone autofocuses. And a lot of people write these off, but for bird photography, this one is gold right here. And in the little demo I'm going to do at the end of this video when we're out shooting the house finch, this one works fantastic. So the same story, anything within that box, the cannon's going to hunt, but it's going to stay within that box. So if I'm if the box isn't on anything, it's not going to ever go outside the box. So you won't be able to get a picture of anything. It's got to be in the box. It'll look in the box and find what's the sharpest. Again, does not look for eyes. Okay, it's, it's not putting a single point around the eye there. It'll look for faces, heads, and bodies though. And that's useful. So we can still get a picture of the snowy owl. For pokey, I don't think we could get pokey. See, if I, if I take those eyes of the owl out of the box and try to get Pokey in there, I just can't get it really to lock on Pokey well. So pop quiz, which one of the focus systems would you call up to make the shot of Pokey? And where, how would you do it? Pop quiz. Good. Go to the Q menu and scroll back to that tiny little focus box. And now we got it right on Pokey. Got the picture. Okay. But... Let's go back to our zone focus here. This one is fantastic for birds in flight. If you have a hawk jumps off a branch and you have to keep this on the hawk as it flies, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So really hard to get birds in flight without having a pretty big box here. So that's what this one is for, mainly birds in flight. The next one is a little ridiculous. It's exactly the same. It's a vertical focus box and it will look inside the box for a face head body this situation is working out good because there's nothing up above or below it that that can compete with it definitely sees the face here and it'll grab the face uh, with gumby no way there's too many things in the way so it doesn't work for gumby so this one i have grayed out usually and um, let me show you the next one and then let me show you how to gray this out the next one is exactly the same, only it's horizontal. And if I want to get Gumby, forget it. If I want to get the snow, I'll forget it. So it just doesn't work. So I, I disable these. How do I disable these? Let me show you that one right now. So go back to the menu button. You're going to go over to the autofocus. And you're going to go to menu number or number three. Or number two, no, number four, sorry. There it is. And then scroll down, limit autofocus methods. Click on that. So whichever one you don't want, just line up on it, tap on it, or push the set button. 
go to the next one. But the key on this one is make sure you hit OK. Now watch when we go back to the Q button. See how they're grayed out. They don't cycle between them. Okay, so pretty cool. All right, guys, let me show you a couple more tricks and then we'll call it a day. So let's go back into the menu. Let's go back into autofocus. And we're right there already, but let's go to number four. This one right here, switching track subjects is interesting. So this is the stickiness of the focus box. By default, it's set to kind of a medium sticky. But for birds, sometimes it's nice to have it really, really sticky. And what do I mean by sticky? We could set it down here, initial priority. That means if you line up on a pelican and the pelican takes off flying and it goes by other pelicans come in the way of you and it goes through a tree and it goes behind a tree, it'll stay locked on that pelican. It'll try with all its power to stay on that initial focus target. So that's pretty good in certain situations for birds in flight. The only trouble with this, if there's a lot of bushes and sticks around, it might lock onto a stick and when the bird flies, it might not want to get off the stick. So that's why by default, it's set just to one. It's kind of a medium stickiness. If you're shooting a bunch of ducks and you want to be able to look at different ducks and take pictures of different ducks, then you want it to be able to switch pretty easily from, from the initial subject to another one to another one. So it's by default it's set on one, but you want, might want to play with this on zero on a real sticky setting here. So that's the one I typically leave it on. So you can play with that however you want. All right, guys, let's go revisit these cases one more time. I promise we take a look at those. So those are on number three, and let's take a look at these again. So by default, they're set on number one. There's a number one, two, three, four case. Really, these are just different setup possibilities between two settings. There's a tracking sensitivity, acceleration, deceleration. Case number one is neutral. Tracking sensitivity is neutral. Acceleration, deceleration is neutral. Case number two, we have decreased the tracking sensitivity. Strangely, that means it's made it more sticky. I know it's confusing. Case number three, we have increased tracking sensitivity and increased acceleration deceleration. And case number four, we have left the tracking sensitivity or the stickiness alone, kept it at zero, but we've bumped the acceleration deceleration up to plus one. So let's explain these. All right, guys, if you want to adjust these, I mean, if you want to use these custom settings, that's fine. Uh, but if you want to manipulate them, you can hit that rate and microphone button and it'll pop up another menu where you can set these independently of one another. My Ninja won't let me go in there, so unfortunately I can't show those to you. Uh, but let me explain these again. Tracking sensitivity is not the greatest word for that. It's stickiness. It's stickiness. But the strange thing about it is, if you go to the left, a more negative number means more stickiness. It's the opposite of that other setting we saw. If you go to the right, to the positive side, it is less sticky, but more jumpy. Apparently, this one is not all about stickiness, though. It's about how fast the camera will switch to another object. So if you have it set over on the plus side, it won't be sticky. It'll jump on another subject really, really fast. And let's, let me use an example that the Canon tech support guy or the technical advisor guy used for this case three. So case three is set with tracking sensitivity to plus one. So it's not gonna be sticky on the initial object, but he used a perfect example of this. So if you're waiting for a downhill skier and you're a professional photographer and you're sitting down the slopes, you can't see them yet. So your autofocus is set up on a bale of hay at about the level where he's gonna to appear to you. You want to be able to immediately jump off the bale of hay and jump on that skier because you're only going to have a couple seconds to get some shots of him. 
So for that case, you don't want this to be sticky. You want it to be jumpy, so it's set to plus. Okay, see how that works? Uh, acceleration, acceleration, deceleration wouldn't have to be set to plus here as well. That's more of a bird setting. And talking about bird settings, let's look at case four. Remember I told you before to go ahead and just leave it in case four for birding? So the way this is set up, it's going to be medium sticky. So if it locks onto a branch, it'll stick to the branch a little bit, but it'll come off that branch fairly quickly. But it's set up for crazy movement, especially little songbirds. They're up, they're down, they're into the plane of the page, they're out of the plane of the page, they're everywhere. So crazy movement, it's the autofocus system is ready for crazy movement is what that is, and it's medium sticky. So that's a good one for birding. And I said, don't be scared to play around with auto. I've had really good luck. If I'm just walking around in the woods and I don't know what the situation's going to be, uh, they say there's a slight delay before it chooses one of these four, but I haven't really found it. So I think if I was a beginning birder, I would leave it on auto for a while and see how you do with that. If that doesn't work for you, go to four and try that until you want to try these individually. Or you could even... You could even set up your own if you wanted to, right? There's not one that has accelera acceleration, deacceleration at plus one and stickiness down to negative one. That might be an interesting one for birding as well. So I have played with that, but I just started playing with it, so I don't, the jury's still out on that one. All right, guys, let's do a real world example now of these eight different autofocus systems by shooting some real birds over at the side of our house. My wife just put some new bird feed in that they love and let's go get some pictures. We'll be able to show you how these eight different autofocus systems work in the real world. Let's go. All right guys, let's run through these. So let's start with the eye and face detect. So see it's having a little trouble there. See it's locking onto the background, but, but it locked on there. But in that case, I mean, jump over to this spot. Detect. We got them for sure. Or go to the zone. I mean, the zones, people discard that one, but it's, I mean, it's pretty useful. Remember, it's still looking for a face within that zone. It's looking for an animal, a dog, cat, or a bird within that, within that zone. All right. Um, I mean, that's all there is to it. Now these get, these might get a little too ridiculous, but it can still, just to prove, it's still looking for a bird and it's found it in this zone, but it stays. If I move like that, it won't get it. If I move like that, it won't get it. I have to be in the zone. But that's too big, right? We don't need that bigger one. But that one works perfect. long as I'm in the zone. And now let's go back to face and eye detect. That's your bread and butter one. And I can recompose with that one. Watch, if I lock onto his eye, as long as I half press, I can still, as long as I keep pressing down, I can recompose him in the, in the frame. So let's lock onto him again. Hold, let's push him over this way. Push him up in that corner. He'll still be sharp. All right, guys, that'll do it. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up. Leave me comments below. Leave me questions down there. I do read those and I'll answer those questions if I can. And consider subscribing to the channel. We'll see you in the next video.